One thing that Don and I remember as kids is getting up early in the morning on weekends and going creek fishing. Now that we're older, there's no better way to relax than to take out the lightweight rods and go in search of a small stream. Vic Bergman of the Crow's Nest Angler is guiding us today to one of his favorite little streams. Lightweight rods and West Slope cutthroats, that's today as Streamlines proudly presents Sport Fishing on the Fly. What a beautiful little area to bring us to today. We had the four by four hike in and a little bit of a hike down, not too bad, a little, some few spots. The falls, all the fish stack up in this falls area here. Yeah, we've got a nice little tail out in the pool here that we can try maybe and a little run just ahead of us too. We can tie on a little a tractor pattern, maybe a royal wolf, something that'll be easy to see. And Excellent, what are we fishing for today? That's gonna be cutthroat. Cutthroat trout. Yep. We have the light tackle. Mm -hmm. Also, what size are we looking at for this uh, fish? I think in here, maybe about a 10, 12 inch uh, cutthroat would be a pretty nice fish. For a river this size here, that's a pretty decent fish. And that's ideal to catch on the rods we're using today. A lot of fun on those lightweight rods. So what would you advise I start with today? Well, I think I'll just reach in my fly box here and give you a little royal wolf. Something easy for the fish to see and, Great. and maybe easy for you to see. Yeah, definitely easy for me to see. <laughs> Looking forward to today. It should be a great day for the light tackle. So why don't we get started? Let's go do it. come up in here they'll just come up and take that fly really delicately they don't really usually it, eh? hit it too hard lost the fly oh there it is over there under the current sometimes it'll be right at the very back of this pool here too a guy could just start by making some Shorter casts, right down the middle of it too. Oh, oh there he goes. Oh, came up. He came up. Yeah, I saw him. Well, he came. He followed it down a yeah, bit. Yeah, he came and took it. To see if he comes back up again. There he is. All right. <laughs> well, that wasn't bad. Your second or third cast. Not bad at all. Was that ever nice too? You know, the really special thing about cutthroat trout is you get to see the whole take, the whole dry right. fly. That's a nice sized fish. Yeah, for a little pool like this, that's oh, a good one. Oh, is it ever, and it's got that two-way rod just bent right over. <laughs> oh, what a pretty little fish. Wow, oh yeah. Look at that, nice, nice. Is that a West Slope cut through? Uh, supposedly they are West Slope cuts West in here, slope, but yeah. There wow, nice little cutty. Yeah. Isn't that a pretty fish? It's nice, this water is so clear, you can see them. There he goes. You can see them come right up and grab that fly. Oh, is that ever nice. Great. Well, I know there's a whole bunch more fish out there waiting for us. Well, I think you're right. I think we'll get granted to one now. Sounds good. Well, Don caught one in his first run. And usually you only catch one fish per run here, don't you? Yeah, in, a little, yeah, in a little area like this, there might be just one or two fish in it. And it looks like there was just the one today, so. We'll just move up ahead here and try a few casts. Yeah. They're in there. They'll usually come up, you know, almost right away. Eh? So you don't need to let it drift for too long. Not too long, no. Nope. You just try a couple of casts in each spot? A couple of casts, and then we can move up and maybe try that next spot just above these boulders here. Okay, we're up into the pool now. That's a good cast. 
Right along that ledge there. There he is. Nope. He came up there. <laughs> Let's see if he comes back again. There we go. Come on, come up here. <laughs> All right, we'll see oh, if we can get him so on much the fun. There we go. There we go. Oh, what a blast. <laughs> oh, cutthroat is great for that. Come up with a drive. He wants to head back into that pool oh, again, but, and he's off. That's oh, okay. tough on him, trying to keep him down from going into that pool. Well, there's probably another one or two in there. Is that fly still floating pretty good, Grant? Uh, I think no. I better do a little drying little off there. there. Yeah. Have you used this uh, dry fly powder much, Grant? Oh, all the time. Sure. All the time. You know, some people have told us that they never catch fish when they use this. Is that right? Well, we've done a couple of shows where we've done this, shake and bake it, throw it out there, and pick the fish off right away. Yeah, that's... Um, Basically just a desiccant, I guess, and it takes all the moisture out of the fly and it really lets that fly float nice nice and high and dry again. Well, we were at the crow's nest here last year. You're the one that put us onto this stuff and definitely swear by it now. There he is. There we go. Now, this one looks like he's a little bit bigger. A little nice little fish, yeah. Huh. He gave himself away. We knew where he was. <laughs> Oh, look at the pretty colors on them, too. Oh, what a special place. I mean, look at all the colors. You have all the reds and oh, with some deep mauves and purples here. It's just an absolutely gorgeous spot. All the leaves on the trees are starting to turn into their autumn colors. It's a really pretty spot. There we go. There's another nice little cutthroat. Oh, West Slope cutthroat. Are such a pretty fish. There we are. Oops. And there he goes. Mm. Off he goes. Slippery fish. Oh, hey. Well, I think Don's going to go up and try and work that part of the pool up there, too, so if you can catch a fish. Sounds good. Yeah, you know, there's no flow going this way, but the flow all seems to go on that other ledge. Yeah. So it I think it like might be sitting over there. I think any of the food that might be washed over the falls or whatever would be all concentrated along that bank. So that's well, probably why they're sitting there. Flies floating nice and high. There it is. There it is. Oh. Have you still got him? No, he missed it. There he is. Well, that didn't take long. No, oh, it never does, does it? <laughs> Just they're right there. They're all sitting along that bank, and that's a nice little fish. <laughs> Especially on these rods. They make them feel like the big five pounders, you know? Slippery little fish. Well, it's one thing about these little fish, you really don't need a net very often, do you? No. That's a nice little cutthroat. Yeah, pretty, pretty little fish. And they just dart away, back to the hole. Here we go again. Now you're saying this whole hole is stacked up with fish. Yeah, there must be quite a few fish in there, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, every time we've cast in there, we get something. Something's come up and taken a look at it well, anyway. Well, before I let Grant back in, I'm going to get one more. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine he said the same thing. Actually, he did. He, he didn't want to leave. <laughs> Today on the technology, we want to take a closer look at these Scott ultra lightweight rods that we're using. They're two-way rods. Don's is an eight and a half foot, actually eight foot eight inches, and the one I'm using is an eight foot two weight rod. Nice little creek rods. In fact, they're ideal little creek rods. The eight foot rod, if you ever get into a creek where you don't have a lot of casting room behind you, well, it's perfect for that. Now, both these rods have got soft tips, which is good for going up to the seven and eight X liters if you have to get down into the real tiny flies, or when you're going after these small fish, it's really perfect. Don's eight and a half foot rod or eight foot eight inch rod is an excellent one when it comes to mending the rod because it's got the longer reach for it for a nymphing perfect little nymphing rod, especially in a creek like this, and you'll see later on the show that we're going to be doing more of that, doing some more nymphing. Now when you come to put a, a fly line onto a rod like this, you should load it up. Now these are two weight rods, you could go up to a three or a four weight line. That'll help your casting ability. You might get up to a 40, 45 foot cast with these types of rods, providing there's not much wind. You don't want to load it up much more than that because they are a very delicate little rod, really lightweight, and that's really what the whole idea is behind these rods is to have a nice lightweight rod to have some fun with with a fish the size that we're catching today. 
Another point is some people are thinking this ultralight thing, maybe taking it too far because they're going after some bigger fish and you end up having to play the fish out for too long with these light rods. So when you're going after fish, consider the size of the fish when you match up with these little ultra lightweight rods. Now Scott's power ply series of rods, which is what we're using today, is really unique. They have a flex rating system that they use to determine how to match the tip of the rod up with the butt of the rod. And that depends on the number of fibers there are in the original material. And that's really good in case you happen to break your rod because you can send that piece of the rod away unconditionally. They'll send a replacement back and it'll match because of that flex rating and it's one of the unique features of having a Scott fly rod. These ultra lightweight rods, they're a lot of fun. Excellent for doing some micro-nymphing for the small dry flies and perfect for creek fishing like we're doing today, you know, maybe like you did when you were a kid too. Or if you're going to be doing any of that yourself, this is the ideal setup, especially for the size of the fish that we're catching. This is excellent. Oh, we should talk about our setups for today because I think so. we wanted to do the ultralight show and that's what we got today, ultralights. Ever, yeah, Vic took us to a great little spot. Both, got, both have two-way rods yep. and uh, our nice little three-way lines. Of course, the casting is not a problem here. You're, you're making, what, 30-foot cast max. And you're, for the most part, we're sheltered too from the wind. We are, yeah. So you, really, this is ideal. We're, we're fishing for up to 14-inch cutthroat, the type of fish. Not big fish, no big winds perfect for ultralight conditions. And when we mean ultralight rods, we're talking two-way, three-way rods. Right. are ideal for this kind of fish. Well, you, know, you were saying there's a lot of places where you can go where the biggest fish you're going to catch is 12 to 14 inches. Exactly. And what a rewarding experience even coming into a place like this and fishing such a gorgeous area like this, you know? It is. It, and it makes it all worthwhile because we've got these little rods. Little rods and, uh, and dry fly. I mean, cutthroat are really well known for taking the dry fly readily. This fishery is, is fantastic, really good for it. So again, like you mentioned, we've got the three weight lines, we've got short leaders on today. Short leaders, uh, no more than seven feet. Could probably even get away with six feet to leader, but six to eight feet is probably ideal for the leader. We're using six X tippets, which is around three pound cast. Oh, oh and there's another take. <laughs> and uh, it's just, you know, we're getting a strike almost every cast. There's, there's a lot of action out here. And if you've never tried creek fishing or small rivers like this, uh, you got to try it because it is a lot of fun. Yeah, well, it's personal preference. Some people like to just go after big fish, but if you're out for the adventure of the day and the scenics yeah. and the whole nine yards like that, this is a great thing to do. And, you know, Vic's brought us into a pretty special little place here. It has. And if you ever want to get here, really, one of the only ways you can get here is through Vic. But there's a lot of areas here for the public that anybody can get to. Like uh, Livingston Creek is one, and there's a few more. Why don't you catch a fish? I'm trying to keep hitting it, but they don't hook up. <laughs> oh, some nice fish up in that pool. It's neat because you can see everything here. We've come to the second pool below the second waterfall, and uh, we're going to start off fishing this dry. Yeah, I think we'll start with the dry fly. We've seen a couple of fish down in the bottom of the pool here that we might be able to uh, catch, and if we don't have any luck with the dry, we can always switch over to a nymph and maybe try some nymph fishing too. Yeah, good way to do it. There's lots of bugs coming off today, seeing caddis, seeing different mayflies. What else is there here? Uh, there's been a few uh, small yellow sally stoneflies, but yeah, there's a few caddis flies and a few mayflies that have been hatching, and the fish have been coming up a little bit. I don't know if we're going to have to really worry about matching the hatch too much. I think that little royal wolf will still work down here as well. Matches just about everything. Good attractor. Yeah. Okay, well, there's this guy right up there. Why don't we see if we can pick him on? Yeah, I can see that, uh, that larger fish. He's moved right back into the same spot. Can you see him there, yep. Grant? Yeah. Right off that point, he's right back there. Let's see if you'll come up to grab that one. Oh, he's coming up, see him? Come up, yep. set your hook. There you go. Now, what you said was important there was that, because you can see him, it's so clear, it's just beautiful water here, was that you don't set the hook until he actually takes it down, right? Because what I wanted to do was pull the trigger as soon as I saw him. That's right. But it's I would have so, pulled it away from him. so clear that if you uh, set that hook too soon, you'll pull it right out of their mouth. Now I think this, I got the littler one of the yeah, two that was there. Yeah, this is a little smaller guy, but we can Look at how pretty he is. You know what this really reminds me of is the Wigwam River. Is that right? Yeah, a lot like it. Almost the same kind of water. Maybe a little bit more water in the Wigwam, but you know, right. pretty fish. Right. And this is just Oops. gorgeous here. There he goes. He wants to go back in a hurry. Excellent. Oh, I wonder if that other guy's still there. Okay, he might see that one. 
gonna go right over him. Uh, little guy. Little came guy up. came and took it. Gee whiz. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get Don in here. Don can come in and get the next one and see if he can pick that big guy. Cause it's just so neat. That's this isn't a, bad size. Yeah, it's a little, a little bigger fish. You want me to get him for you? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind, that'd be okay. great. West Slope cutthroats. Yeah, they sure are. They're pretty little fish too. Oh, they are gorgeous. That that one's actually got a little bit of meat to them. Oops, and there he goes. So we've decided to go with the uh, with the nymph now. There's a nice fish holding in the very back of this pool. We couldn't get him on the dry fly, but you're saying yeah, you had me this little nymph to try to get him. Now, what nymph did you have me here? Just a little, about a size uh, 14 beadhead prince nymph. That, uh, uh, any reason why not, this nymph? Not or? nothing really in particular. I think he we definitely got a few good casts over him with the dry fly. Yeah. He wasn't interested no. at all. So we, you know, prince nymph's a good general all-purpose type pattern that seems to work in right. fairly well. Good. Well, we'll give it a try right now. Yeah, Cast we should. In there. Yeah, let's maybe put on a little bit of a bit of a uh, strike, strike indicator? indicator for you. And what we call the gooey bob material. Okay. And how far up do we put this uh, well, strike he's, indicator? He's in pretty shallow water. I think if we stay about oh about four feet at the four very feet? most uh, above the, the fly, okay. we could probably even go a little bit closer. I'd say right around there. Right there. Should, Excellent. Should do so it really, right. you're just judging the uh, the strike indicator again on how how depth, deep the water is. Depth of the water. He's depth in fairly water. shallow water, so. And welcome to On The Bench. You know, a lot of fly fishermen over the years have used different types of attractor patterns and one that tends to get overlooked is the Royal Coachman. Well today we're going to get back to the basics on On The Bench and tie you up a, a version of a Royal Coachman, it's called a Royal Wolf. So make sure you have this list of ingredients before you start. Deer hair for the tail, peacock curl with red floss for the body, white calf tail for the wings, and some brown hackle for the hackle. I'm tying this fly on a size 14 long hook dry fly and I'm using some ADOT black thread. So I've taken a small snippet of white calf tail for our wing and an important thing about these flies is if you are tying in a wing make sure you tie the wing in first at the start of the fly and then you don't run into any problems of having overlap on your wings later on when you put in all your body material and it helps fill in the body nicely too. So we'll put this white calf tail in, leave a little bit at the head of the, the, eye, of the ho eye of the hook, and we'll make sure this wing is upright and divided. Now I've taken a small clump of deer hair, nice dark deer hair, and we're going to slide right back to the tail and tie this on for the tail. Make sure that deer hair sticks up nice and high. And usually how you accomplish that is to wind the thread back around that deer hair and back around the tail and up again. What makes the Royal Coachman and the Royal Wolf such a unique fly is a segment of the body. You have a little peacock curl tag, then you go into some red floss, and then another peacock curl tag. So I'm going to start off with one peacock curl barb and tie this in for the very butt end tag. The middle section of the body will now take a little red floss and wrap it in. And only wrap that red floss as wide as the floss is. A couple of wraps. You don't want it real bulky in the middle. Just a nice little red tag in the middle. We're going to take another barb of peacock curl and wrap in and up at the head end just to finish off the body segments. So it's gone peacock curl to red floss and back to peacock curl again. To finish off the fly, to imitate the legs and fill in with the hackle, is we've taken two strands of the uh, brown hackle and I've taken two strands mainly to, to fill in the top end of the fly just to give it the real nice bushy look. You have to remember that this fly is an attractor pattern and you do want that hackle to be nice and full. You know a lot of fly fishermen today are really into matching the hatch. I'm notorious for that. I'll go out and if there's a big caddis hatch on I'll take out my caddis and try every one in the box. But just this past year, I've really gotten in to trying attractor patterns again, and, and they've been really good for me. So I think if you've got old attractors in that fly box, pull them out and give them a try. And if you don't, tie one of these real wolves up, because it works really good.
So what's important here, we're casting out, we're trying to keep as much fly line off the water as we can. Yeah, we've got a lot of current going through this pool here and by keeping your rod tip up high and keeping as much line off of the water, you'll be able to prevent uh, your fly from dragging. Here we got. I think that one looks like he's got a little bit of rainbow in him. Yeah, it's got some, uh, some nice spots down the side. Oh, there he goes. Done deal. So you've just put on a small split shot, I see. Yeah, just I think, yeah, we've got a bit of a deep pool just ahead yeah. here too, just to get that fly down a little bit quicker here. We put on a little split shot. And right, just to get the fly down. We also put on the, the strike indicator a little further up to allow the fly to get down a little deeper. That's right. Looks like we're fishing probably six to eight feet of water now. Uh, just up ahead there, there would be six to eight feet and there's kind of a shallow shelf that comes right across the right. river here and they seem to be holding right in front. Well, ideally I've got this eight and a half foot two-way rod. Uh, Scott makes this specifically for nymphing for, for lightweight rod for small fish. Good. So we'll give it a try, see how it, uh, see how it works. Right where you said. Yeah, there's a little bit that's of a, a nice. That's a nice little fish. Well, yeah, it comes to about six to eight feet, and then it goes through a nice little gap there, and it's a deep little pocket right through the middle. Oh, I can get this guy. Just try to get him off real nice and easy. Should be able to just undo him. There. Bring the lip. There he goes. Try that gap again, or you think further up into the head? Uh, let's, I don't know. Let's go for this guy back sure. here and see if yeah. we can. See, it looks like there's three or four trout holding right in that slot there. Right in through there. Well, eventually, if you uh, catch all the small guys, you'll catch <laughs> you the big one. The big one, yeah. Oh, we'll get this guy off. There he goes. Boy, it just shows you when, when the dry fly is finished, you can really have a lot of fun nymphing. Yeah, if they're not coming up to the dries, you might as well put on an infant and see oh, what happens. No, oh, that's every cast. You know, every cast I've had a hit or a, or a fish, so get it up. Try to get it through that run again. It should go right down the middle there. Oh, that's better. Right down the middle of the gap again. And they just keep coming up in there. That's amazing. Well, you know what we'll do is we're in a really good spot here. I'll get Grant in. I'll let him get into a few. Sure, Maybe he can get a big one. This, is, this isn't bad. I got three right away. Wow. Oh. Oh, there he goes. What a great little day. Oh, a special day. A real special day, you know. Oh, man. I didn't know what to expect when we came here, but it is something sweet. Well, coming into a little creek like this, smaller fish, later tackle you think ah you know what, what's it going to be but what a great day we got here we saw these two beautiful waterfalls you can see the takes see of the, the fish. fish that was really special and we have to pass a special thanks on to vic bergman of the crow's nest angler for bringing us here and also uh scott fly rods for giving us these uh, nice little two weight fly rods to try out great little outfits for small fish absolutely perfect for a day like today oh, perfect we are at remote it is the wild here so you get a chance to come here take care and conserve our waters Again, got a great little cutthroat fishery here. Really nice. See you next time. On well, sport fishing on the fly. See, right, right here below us still there's a few right at the very bottom. Oh, right in there, right there. Right there, I could maybe get them. Yeah, we got one of them. <laughs> oh boy. You see him, you cast to him, you get him. Let's go get a little size to him. A little fatter. He's got a little rainbow in him too, it looks like. Is that right? Let's see here. Come here. Yeah, it looks like that one's yeah. got a little bit of rainbow in him, you bet. Still has those cutthroat type gashes there, but he definitely looks like he's got some rainbow in it. It's a little hybrid, a cutthroat. Yeah. See the spots down the side? Yeah. There he goes.